Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a house plant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the variegated monstera, and this is actually the second time I'm doing this video. The first video, I actually talk about the care and I show you how to, I propagated the plant. And today's video, I'm going to be focused on two subjects. One, how we can retain variegation if you have too much white or too much green. And number two, how do you buy this plant? And I, I'm getting a lot of DM from you guys showing me your cuttings that you bought for a lot of money and usually they're already rotted on the, on the roots or they're no, show no potential of variegation. So in today's video, I'm going to teach you how you can identify these issues before you buy them. And as a disclaimer, I don't want this video to become a propaganda to buying variegated monstera. I actually bought these at a very very inexpensive price before the pandemic i got three plants and i cut them all up and i'm propagating them and no i'm not selling them i'm going to be growing them i enjoy having them around and i will sell them when it's the right time but as of now everybody's growing really fast i have the right lighting conditions in my home so that they can push out beautiful variegations so when the time is right i will definitely cut it up and then sell it make some money build a nursery or whatever but right now i'm not taking any uh, dms or requests on buying these plants because i'm not selling and in my previous video i did mention that this plant is actually a little bit overrated it's a little bit overpriced right now and the price will definitely go down if you wait a lot of people are like me uh, they're growing these out and then there will be a lot of them in the market soon Meanwhile, there are a lot of really cool plants, I do mention that in my previous video, that are deserving of our attention as well. So let me quickly go through the care with you again. Number one, give them the brightest, brightest indirect sunlight with a little bit of direct sunlight. It will help them push out the variegation. Low light equals to reversion, you'll turn into a full green plant. And too much light and you will have an all white leaf like this which I'm going to show you uh, each cutting later to give you uh, to walk you through some of their troubleshooting and to give you irrefutable proof that more light equals more variegation. In terms of potting mix, this is very important for them. Give them something chunky, something that their roots can really grip and grow into because when they feel like they're climbing, they're gripping onto something, they will produce bigger leaves and more fenestrated leaves faster. And this is why moss poles are very compulsory for these plants. They do need to climb for, you, for them to push out these beautiful fenestrated leaves. And in terms of watering, these guys are actually very tricky. Again, if you don't have any experience with regular monsteras, I definitely want to recommend for you guys to get those first and practice for a year or two before you get these uh, babies. You will get these uh, crisping brown edges on the variegated monsteras. Some of these don't have it yet. Uh, they're still perfectly beautiful, but give it a year and I guarantee you they will come. So the crisping brown edges are usually a sign of um, underwatering or overwatering and they're not forgiving. Even one episode of under overwatering can give you those crisping leaves. And in this case, this one was actually a propagated leaf and it's done. It's like very stressed out. It used all its energy to push out these two leaves. So it's sacrificing some of the uh, variegated parts because the variegated part of the leaf is weak and it's draining energy from the plant. So the plant will absolutely sacrifice the variegated portion, turning it brown and crispy when it's not given the ideal condition. All right, so let me walk you through the collection, some of the cuttings here, and my challenges and my tricks and tips on keeping the variegation. So let's get started. Let's start the tour with this cutting first. This is actually propagated the same time as the other leaves, but this was in trouble because it kept rotting and the roots here are uh, keep getting brown and mushy. So I just kept cutting it back until I see some of these whites here. If you did not cut off your mushy leaves, it's just going to keep spreading. It's going to rot the whole plant all the way up to the stem. So the whole thing's going to rot. So when you see those, you definitely cut off the brown, uh, mushy aerial roots. Cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it until you see some white. And then you may want to dip it in cinnamon powder or activated charcoal in my case. Leave it for like an hour or two. And then I just pop it in water. And this is how you propagate them in water. Uh, you want to use a shallow vessel, you want to give them very very bright indirect light and almost never change out the water. I would say I would change this every three to four weeks. Uh, but I do top this water up, don't get me wrong, I don't want to let this cutting dry out. So it's already recovered, the siblings have taken off, they have put out secondary leaves but this one is still busy putting out roots. So I have lost a few cuttings to root rot. And the best way to save cuttings after they have rotted is to, again, cut off the roots and put it in the water. Because if you put it back in moss or in a potting mix, 
the rot may continue so water would be your best option in that case and this leaf is really really tired as you can see here it's probably been propagated for around three months if I'm not wrong and it's shown signs of stress but no worries I this leaf is gonna die anyways what we're looking for here is signs of life so I want to quickly show you over here this is the growing eye right here do you see the swell and that is where the new leaf is going to come from and the variegation you can see here is touching the growing eye which means the next leaf is going to be about 50% variegated because it's got some of this variegation. If you see that this is fully green in this area, this uh, I don't know if you can see that well, there's, a, there's definitely a mound here, yeah. Uh, yeah, you can see something's protruding. If that is completely green or completely white, your next leaf, your next leaf is going to be completely green or white. So keep that in mind when you're buying your uh, variegated monstera. And what I'm finding is that a lot of sellers are selling this plant with already rooted, uh, rotted uh, a stem here. In fact, you should probably cut this off. This is not good for the plant. You should cut this off. And even rotted roots. So the seller tried to root the plant, failed, and then posted it online and sold it to you. That is really messed up. I'm sorry, like 2020 was a sh pretty ch 2021 is off to a really bad start and I'm just lost my faith in humanity at this point. Do not buy cuttings, do not sell your cuttings if they're not rooted, if you if you try to root them and it's rot off, do not try to sell it. That is unethical. So uh, with that in mind, uh, if you do see sellers trying to sell those cuttings, call it out. Don't be quiet. Do not be a silent majority. Call out the seller and make sure that nobody buys a cutting. So be patient for you guys. Do not just go on a tangent. Do not just bite on an impulse. Know your cutting because this is quite an investment, you guys. And the, the thing is, when you buy them at this price now, in a year's time, that price is going to drop. Trust me, they're going to be worthless in one to two years' time. So don't be a dumb dumb. <laughs> yeah, and then this uh, cutting, I'm not going to put it in soil yet. I'm going to be waiting for more roots and I'm going to put it in soil and hopefully this will take off. Now what happens if this uh, roots completely did not develop where it's just completely dead, like everything's rotted and all you have is a stump? No worries, there is still chance, I would say around 20% chance where you can put it in water and what happens is that the plant is going to absorb water from uh, the bottom of the stem and it's going to support this leaf and it's also going to support the next node. So the next node may be able to grow a little stump out of it and that little stump will put out a new set of aerial roots and that is your chance of having this plant to root. Of course, you will lose this entire cutting because only the tiny stump and that little bit of root is going to support the new plant. So you will have a baby, baby plant that will take you maybe two to three years to reach a mature size, but you will have the plant. So be patient. Uh, you still have a fighting chance if you lose the roots. If you lose the leaf, you can also do wet stick propagation where, you know, let's say you don't have the leaf, it's rotted off. You just have a little stump here with an aerial root and then a node. Just put it on top, on top of sphagnum moss. Keep it a little bit humid, but never damp because they will rot and new shoot may appear. So yeah, they're quite miraculous that way. But keep in mind, uh, when you're buying your plant, the, do not look at the leaf. The leaf is not important, you guys, because I keep getting people sending me photos of monsteras and they're showing me the leaf. They're like, oh, you know, can I, should I buy this? Look at the leaf, it looks good. I said, no, you should look at the roots and the growing eye of the plant because that is going to determine the variegation and the longevity of the plant. So say you're getting a monstera from a top cutting, which means that it's taken from the top of the stem and it doesn't have a growing eye yet. The next point where the leaf is going to come from is here, right here. I don't know if you can see, there's a triangle over here. And that is exactly, oh my god, Gia, hey, I'm filming here. So uh, this triangle here, this is where the new leaf will come from. So if you see that a plant that you're buying has all green petiole, no matter how much variegation you have here, if this part is not variegated, you're going to have green leaves. Or in this case, this is actually very, very dangerous because this is all white. So the next leaf may become all white. Okay, so on with our tour. I'm going from left 
to write. So uh, in no particular order, so I'm going to go through some troubleshoot that I have. So this is actually the parent plant of one of my product biggies. I have three variegated monsteras that I cut all of them up. This is one of the plants. So when I got it, this was already cut. So I grew it out of this uh, vine here and then I cut the top vine where I propagated all of these leaves from, not all of these, there's some of these from this plant. It was a pretty big plant already. So uh, the old leaves are obviously uh, dying or dead. This is very, very old. And what happens is that these are all viable nodes, as you can see here, even though the leaves are, are dying and old, what, you were, what we're looking at is here, where this is where the party's at. I think this is trying to put out a new shoot too, over here. So each node has a potential to give you a whole new plant and a whole new branch, uh, provided that the variegation hits the growing eye. But this is the new vine that has grown since I uh, made the cut. And it's given me about three leaves. So this took about three months time to get here. So the leaves are actually quite okay here. And the new leaf is quite variegated, it's quite nice. This is getting bright indirect light. So I'm gonna be waiting on this uh, growth update. And usually parent plants bounce back really well. This new leaf is already a little bit fenestrated. Okay, next we have another parent plant. I believe this was cut up probably about three, four months ago. I don't remember the dates on these. Again, the old leaves are tired, they're dying. This is bacteria, but I kept it there because they're still photosynthesizing for the plant. So do not worry about it. But at some point in the future, these nodes are gonna give me multiple branches. They can give me wet stick propagations. So I'm not worried about the plant. Keep in mind that the life of variegated monstera is actually in the stem and in the roots. The leaves are just for show. So these are, this is where I made the cut before. And this is the new vine that's appeared. And this is the first leaf. This is the second leaf. And the third leaf is already fenestrated and looking very good. It's hardening off now, it's just unfurled. So I do give this bright indirect light as well and I have no issues with this plant. And I gave it a new moss pole and it's going to be uh, gripping into the moss pole soon. I'm, I may have to actually tie this plant onto the moss pole, and, but this root should find the moss pole quite well. I, the ideal condition is if these roots grow into the moss pole here. So I'm gonna have to do that with the next leaf, I think. And once you find uh, one node that attached to the pole, it should find itself up. You don't even need to help it anymore. The plants are really awesome that way. Next contender, we have this guy that was propagated in live moss and it's doing quite well uh, here is the new leaf and i don't have any struggles with these but i'm going to check the back of the patio this is very important so this leaf has appeared and i need to check the back to see if the new leaf is going to be variegated and this is the portion that you want to look at and it looks to me like the next leaf is going to be very very variegated and i'm worried so what i'm going to do is this cutting has to be uh, punish. <laughs> it's got to be in the dark. It's got to be in a lower light situation so that the next leaf will be a little bit more green. Okay, so I'm going to be interrupting my own video. Sorry, but this is important to show you. So these are all the variegated monsteras that are given medium indirect light. They're sort of put under the shelf because I want them to put out more green leaves. And these guys over here, they are going to be getting some morning direct sunlight, very bright indirect light throughout the day. So there's a difference. So I sometimes I have to move things around depending on uh, the leaves and the variegation, basically. And another tip is you can also face the leaf away from the light so that they're not getting as much light. And so as you can see here, these are all putting out very white leaves and it's actually very risky to give them too much light at this point. Okay, so this part right here, this is a problem child. Uh, so this leaf is actually doing okay. It put out a new uh, leaf here and it's in, already in potting mix, but the new leaf is all white. So what do I do? Uh, I looked at the back here and okay, so this is the first leaf, this is the second leaf. And look at the back of the patio. I don't see any green. This cutting may die off. I may have to throw this away. Or uh, let, I'm gonna see when this opens up, when this, uh, uh, what do you call it? It's gonna split these two leaves between uh, the sheath. 
and then actually you know what I can actually peel it open I don't see any green at all you guys the best choice that I have is to cut this leaf off and hope that something else will grow from underneath here there's another node in here belonging to uh, this this leaf so if that node because it's too young to see the growing eye on these uh, I don't know where the growing eye is. so let's say there's a little bit of green here if the new leaf appear from here from the green sides it may give me uh, some green and I don't need to explain to you why all white leaves are bad right because I think you guys should know that they are gonna uh, drain the energy from the plant and they're not gonna produce any food for the plant so I'm, I'm going to cut this off actually you know what? I'm gonna do it hang on one second I do see I do see a little bit of green here hang on yeah but this is on the side so the plant will grow the new growth from the back of the patio not from the side but here's what I noticed when you play with light levels the plant can move this around they can shrink this they can increase this they can swirl the green around a little bit just so you know I have noticed that so I'm, I'm not gonna cut this plant off yet I think so I'm gonna put this in low light doesn't mean no light but low light and see if the plant will choose um, to sprout some green leaves another problem child and uh, this leaf was actually quite nice as you can see do not determine your variegated monstera by the leaf that it was propagated in because I would when you look at the leaf before it crisp up of course you think that oh you know this is a beautiful cutting it's gonna give you healthy leaves no look at that so what happened was that um, so this node put out a new branch here and the growing eye was uh, actually on the variegated part of the parent plant of the stem of the cutting sorry and so it put out white leaves after white leaf and if the next leaf is white this plant is gone I have to throw it away basically so actually this is the newest leaf and actually I do see a little bit of green here so I have some hope that it may put out some green leaves but this needs to be put in lower light too because I need to ensure that the next leaf is not all white okay so next up here we have this plant and this was propagated about six or seven months ago this was an older plant and it's doing really well let me find this is the first leaf I believe that it was propagated in and then it just put out this second leaf it's really beautiful almost half moon and then the third leaf is over here it's got a little bit white and this, this is when I freaked out I started putting it in lower light condition and it put out the next leaf this is actually a beautiful shaped leaf it's small but fenestrated but it's almost all white so I, again I kept it in low light and voila the next leaf looks like this so I kept it basically on the floor of my balcony under a shelf so it's getting very very medium to low indirect light so as you can see here this is gonna do quite well because it's, it's gonna survive if I kept it in bright indirect light with some direct sunlight I may kill this plant I may give this plant too much variegation and let me look at the back of the patio yeah, the back of the patio looks fine I see a strip of green so this plant is probably going to give me nice green uh, green and variegated leaves next moving on here's another beautiful variegated leaf and also another reason why you shouldn't buy leaves based on variegation because the next leaf voila is all white because it's coming from an all white portion of the stem I must have given this parent plant uh, one of these parent plants too much light so that the, they are producing a lot of white leaves but hopefully it's not too late to fix that because I'm going to be putting them in lower light so this is the first leaf that appeared very cute right and then this is the second leaf so I'm very very worried that this is too much variegation I have I cannot see yet if there's any green in here but if I don't see any green on the patio of this new leaf I may have to cut the leaf off so that I can pr promote another growth from below I can see a little bit of green down here okay the next one is this guy right here sorry it's so windy but I have to film today I've got a million things to do and this is also about six to seven months old this is the original leaf it's tired but I'm not gonna cut it off it's still photosynthesizing for the plant this is the next leaf juvenile form this is the next leaf uh, next leaf and let me see this is the next one and then this is the newest and this is 
this is the near growth point as you can see it's pretty variegated it looks quite nice and I'm actually uh, put a few pots here so that the area roots will root right into the pots and then when I propagate this plant it's just going to be very easy <laughs> to propagate uh, so I, did, I do need to give this a moss pole soon though and the stem look at the variegation on the stem this is very important you guys you need to make sure that the stem is variegated and let me look at the back yeah, so this leaf is going to be fine. This is a good plant, um, very healthy variegation on these. So next we have this guy growing in moss. I'm going to pop them up soon after this uh, video and it's putting up one leaf and then this next leaf is looking quite beautiful. So no troubleshooting with this. This is going to be doing okay. And maybe let me see if I can... Yeah, I, I, I'm not seeing any root porn here. I'm sorry, I, I was expecting to see some beautiful roots. You can see a little bit of roots there, I guess. Yeah. But it will be much happier in an aeroid potting mix. It will give me uh, better leaves, like bigger and more split leaves if I repot this too. The next one is this one, and it's a sibling. It's cut at exactly the same time. It's already put out one baby leaf this is already looking very beautiful and i don't have any issues with variegation on this one this is a very safe plant to have so i'm going to be potting this up soon and this one is about six to seven months old it's already got four leaves now this is a problem child uh, this came from the same generation as this one actually uh, but this one isn't putting out any variegated or largely variegated leaves I had this grown in my nursery where it's a little bit uh, lower light. It's actually medium to bright indirect light. So what I, I did was actually moved it here. So I moved it where it gets morning direct sunlight. And as, as you can tell, it's actually uh, morning right now. And there's, the birds are chirping and the sun is coming up. So that's the strip of light that's getting direct sunlight. But by 10 a.m., this light is gone. So it's going to get uh, indirect light all day. I put my variegated ones Adansonii also uh, in this area so that they can get good uh, direct morning light. So when you're chasing variegation, direct morning sunlight is your answer, by the way. And if you don't have good light, don't worry about it. You can supplement it with artificial light. Household LED or grow lights will do, but you do need light to bring out variegation. Anyways, what I wanted to re reveal about this plant is that after I moved it out here for about, a, I think three, two to three months, I can't remember how long it was. Look at the back, voila. So this is the back of the latest leaf. This is gonna give me very variegated leaf next. As you can see here, this it's gonna be this sharp point right here. That's where the new leaf is gonna appear, it's gonna come out. Uh, this plant is gonna be doing okay. I'm very confident with the variegation on the next leaf. So this is irrefutable proof that more light is more variegation. And if you put it in low light, you will lose the variegation completely. So uh, this one is also a problem. I actually just moved this out about two weeks ago into the same spot as this one because it's losing its variegation as well. Here you go, there you go. And the new leaf actually, excuse me if you don't mind. There's actually a little bit of variegation here. So what I need to watch out for, and it's a Dishkidia roommate here. What I do need to watch out for is in the new leaf, uh, around here I need to make sure that there's as you can see here it's quite variegated so that's good that means that the next leaf has uh, potential to be variegated and uh, see, I mentioned earlier as the leaf hardens as it grows if you put it in better light the plant can choose the strip the strip does move the strip of variegation or the green it kind of rotates a little bit or it can uh, what do you call it? the variegation can go upwards and downwards I've noticed it I Sorry, I don't have a time lapse for it, but believe me, the strip here definitely moves and the plant is capable of choosing variegation based on light levels and I have a feeling it could also be due to nutrients as well. If they have better nutrients, they may give you better variegation because the plant feels like they don't need as much chlorophyll, it's doing well, it's happy, but I may be wrong with the nutrient part, but I swear by the light part. Give your Monstera's bright light and if you can't give it artificial light and if you can't don't buy it get another plant finally we have this beast right here super windy and this is actually the first plant that I cut up this is the parent plant and this is probably about nine months old and it's put out let me show you here I made the cut 
actually right here. What is going on here? It's like F1 car racing. I didn't, there's no car racing tracks around here. But anyways, so this is where I made the cut. And this is the new vine that appeared. And then these are all the crazy roots that are uh, appearing from this plant. And this is actually air layering. I put this here about two weeks ago. And my goodness, it's already rooted really well. So I'm going to be cutting this plant up soon to um, multiply them so I have more of these going on. I love seeing these around. I like, I like waking up to these babies. And so what someone actually commented like, how are you going to get big plants if you keep cutting them? Well, my answer is we're not really in the plant game to get big plants, right? Not all of us want it. Not all of us need it. For me, more plants is better sometimes. And also I'm patient. I know that all these cuttings, if I give them two to three years time, they will become huge and big plants very quickly and with the right care. When you give it moss pole, when you give it the right potting mix and you fertilize it well. And by well, I don't mean like over fertilizing it. And I do have a video on fertilizing, so do check that out if you haven't yet. But I don't mind, I'm a patient guy. Um, and I also, I'm spending a lot of money in the last two years on plants and I need to recoup my losses. I need to sell some of these and I need to buy more plants actually. And I wanna build a nursery. I wanna get myself a home, move out of my parents' house. So yeah, I don't mind cutting up my plants. So I, I totally believe that there are many philosophies in house plant keeping and everybody has their justified reason of why they keep house plants and nothing right and nothing wrong about it. So yeah, I'm totally okay with cutting up my plants, but if you're not, that's your game and that, more respect to you. <laughs> Anyways, I, I digress too much. So this is the first leaf, second leaf, third leaf starting to split, fourth leaf, fifth leaf, getting very variegated. And this is getting morning direct sunlight, by the way. And I do move these plants around. Uh, whenever I feel like it's getting green leaves like this, I do move it to get some direct morning sunlight. And when it gets super bright in uh, variegations, I do move it back. So this plant got a little bit of abuse because I keep moving it around. But this is how I can manage to control the variegation. Oh my God, this wind. Uh, so the, the, this, as you can see here, the new leaves are doing really well. The variegation is perfect. You want 50% variegation on the leaf and probably nothing more, nothing less. So right now I would put this plant in a bright indirect light location because it should get some light to push out uh, the next, actually, you know what? Let me look around the back. Actually, you know what? I need to give this uh, plant some direct sunlight in the morning because the patio here is almost fully green. Look at this, this is all, almost green. This needs light, so I'm gonna do that. And after this leaf hardens, I am probably going to cut it, actually pro propagate this into a few more plants. I actually received a pretty snarky comment from my previous video. I guess people think I'm a show off, that I am you know, showing off my variegated monsteras. If you guys are followers of this channel, you will know that that is the last thing that I do. I love all plants equally. And I just happen to have a lot of variegated monsteras and they happen to be very popular right now. They happen to be worth some money. So I'm going to be transparent with you in that I'm going to be selling this eventually at some point. But I do hope that the prices will come down by that time because I don't believe that people should be spending ridiculous amounts of money on these. They are still overrated. And no, I'm not going to be selling these under market value because I have things that I need to invest in so that I can give you guys better contents, I can buy more plants, I can get a nursery, I can do some charitable work with reforestation and conservation of species, which is something that I hope to get into sometime in the next few years. So yeah, for those of you who are haters, I'm so sorry, I, don't, I can't please everybody. And for those of you who stuck around because you believe in what I do. Thank you so much. So I hope that this video is useful for you guys and keeping your variegations and it's a buying guide to buy your monsteras. Do not get fooled by sellers that are trying to make a quick buck out of this. I'm so disappointed with the market right now with, with how people are buying recklessly and selling with almost no business or moral ethics. Sorry, I don't mean to end this video on a negative note. 
I am at botanist on Instagram if you want to DM me on any questions regarding plant care and propagations. I'll try my best to get back to you. Meanwhile, do take care and stay safe. I will see you in the next video. Bye!